Guys, I just went through Bloomberg's GPT paper. You know the one titled Bloomberg GPT, a large language model for finance? It felt like it was a super interesting announcement, you know, having in mind that there's no other large language model that is specialized for the finance industry. At least none that I've, uh, that I've heard of or that has any papers published. So what they've done is that they built a 50 billion parameter LLM, significantly smaller than GPT-4, but trained on a wide range of financial data. And of course, their findings show that the mixed data sets that they used outperform existing models by significant margins without sacrificing performance on general LLM benchmarks. And look, I'm sure they outperformed, right? I'm sure that they outperformed as in, as in the end, right? It's a specialized model on a particular industry. But if you take any other company that built and will build their own LLMs, what do you think will happen? Will theirs underperform the current benchmarks? And in the end, what current benchmarks? The ones that they decide that make them look good. And it's easy to pick and choose, you know, whatever works for you and whatever makes you look good. Because look guys, if you found an LLM paper published by a large for-profit organization that states, oh, you know, we created this, but it's underperforming, let me know, you know, because I would love to read that paper and literally promote it. Because realistically, all these companies create outperforming models as a publicity stunt so that they can say that they were first. And Bloomberg did very, very well, you know, as they moved very, very fast. Well, you have to take into account that they have the largest financial data sets in the world. And it's great that they've done this. Also, I'm happy that they shared a lot about these data sets that they used, you know, about the model that they used and the evaluation criteria. But even though it's a lot of information and it made for a really, really good read, I'm not going to go through these specifically as it's best for you to read it in depth. But from a data set perspective, uh, one thing that you need to note is that 50% of the data was financial and then 50% was public. And personally, I would have expected a higher percentage of financial data, but I guess it's still limited, you know, even for Bloomberg. And they say that they used diverse structured and unstructured financial data sets, which is normal because uh, they had it for like so many years, you know, like 30, 40 years. And these data sets consist of company filings with content from financial websites, news sources, transcripts, Bloomberg news, opinions, and press releases. And for all of these sources, they also specify the percentage in the training set. For example, company filings, something that I find really, really useful, are about 2% of the training set. Press releases are about 1.2% and so on, right? And the vast majority of the financial training set, about 42%, so 42% out of this 50%, consists of data from web sources, you know, sites that contain financial information. So unless they got this data from behind the paywall, this information was used to, to train other GPTs as well. So the large majority of data even though if it's financial and they don't really specify whether it was behind the paywall or not. And this is quite important because otherwise the only advantages that they have when it comes to the training set are their proprietary um, articles and articles that are, of course that are behind the paywall, uh, behind the paywall from Bloomberg, right? And the company filings, but even the company filings are still public. It's just that they put them all together and they uh, and they train the model on top of that. So, I kind of, I fail to see exactly what is the real advantage for this specific GPT, because if the data is already available out there because it's public, I, I, I fail to see what is the, the leverage that they have when it comes to the financial data that they trained it on, because the model is smaller. And also, if only, let's say, 10% of the data that it was trained on is actually proprietary and behind some paywalls and somewhere that is not accessible uh, to the public, then the model isn't that great, to be honest, right? I mean, I'm sure it's great, but how can it compare and outperform clearly uh, over other uh, GPDs? The fact that the data is after 2007 and that the quality and quantity of data increases throughout the years, this is another thing, right? Because this is something that you have to keep in mind that as more recent years will contribute more to the learning. And that's normal, right? But another interesting aspect is that they didn't use any date information 
in this work. They say that they plan to use it in the future, but for now it doesn't really include time periods. And it will be really, really interesting to see if future iterations, they, if they will include any timestamps and whether will, they will provide some interesting patterns about these time periods. And this is something that I would have really expected from the first iteration. But my bet now, if I think about it, is that they'll include this, you know, when they're going to make a premium uh, thing out of it, you know, so they can capitalize on this LLM. So what does the model do now? Why is it relevant and why should you use this instead of GPT-4 or other general purpose transformers? You know, assuming that you'll be able to. Well, for now, it can suggest news headlines. It can assist journalists in their day-to-day -day work. And it can also answer finance-related queries. So financial question answering system. And this is great as well, right? Especially having in mind that they include those filings and you might be able to get an answer pretty quickly. Both of these two capabilities though are achievable also by other GPTs. So that 2% of the training data coming from company filings, this might not be a great selling point. But still, you know, like let's keep in mind that a large portion of the financial data that they used was most likely used by other GPTs as well. So we have to keep in mind that the actual advantages of this specific finance related uh, GPT aren't that great compared to other general purpose transformers. So with this in mind, what is the best and most useful feature of this Bloomberg GPT? Having in mind that we can as well just use other general purpose transformers. And the main takeaway here is that uh, it has the ability to generate Bloomberg query language. And this is a proprietary language and except for Bloomberg terminal users, I'm not really sure who's using it. So it will really be a nice feature for them. But you see this whole GPT thing, you know, that they built and promoted is just another feature for their Bloomberg terminal. And this gets me thinking, right, about all of these LLMs that will be created by companies, you know, will just be some query features for their own tools. You just put them behind the paywall and then sell them as another service without much benefit to the world as a whole. So in the end, it's just going to be business as usual. And something that confirms this for me is their openness policy, which as you might assume is not open. Funny how these companies use openness to actually state the opposite. I mean, mate, just, just use the correct words, you know, not wrap things around in nice phrases just so that you appear in a certain light. So yes, I mean, Bloomberg GPT is great, but it's not open. The same as probably every other LLM that will be created by for-profit organizations. And the reason is that Bloomberg's core business is around providing access to data that has been collected over the course of decades, right? So they're not just going to share that data with you, you know, because they get money from it. So they're, they're of course afraid of data leakage because if they specify the weights, People can find out, you know, sections of this financial data and then it's not going to be good for their business. So they won't share any details about the model except the generalities in the model section of the paper. And I think this is going to be the case for all of the LLMs that will be created from now on by these organizations. They're just going to be nice selling points for their products and features for their current tools. All right. So keep that in mind. But until then, you know, like when we're going to see more and more LLMs come out, uh, we, we, we cannot say that for sure. Okay. I mean, look, in the end, this is a great, great um, initiative, right, by Bloomberg. And I'm glad that they're first because anyway, they have the largest financial data sets in the world. But I'm really, really curious to see if any organizations will actually open their, their models to the public. My bet is that they won't. But who knows? right if you like this type of content don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel it would really really help me out also if you want to get better when it comes to llms if you want to understand more about transformers if you want to uh, take your career further when it comes to data science and ai go and check out coursera i have a link down in the in the description it would really help me out if you would use that link it's an affiliate link of course and it would uh, definitely help me buy a coffee but it will also help you definitely uh, understand more about transformers, understand about the technologies of the future and how you, how you can upskill so that you can be competitive in the job market. OK, definitely check those uh, courses out. The link is in the description. And as always, 
keep your luck to know my channel and I'll see you in the next one.